guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a Q&A and my most recent, current, up-to-date makeup routine. I just wanted to do something a little different, lighthearted, with everything that's been going on. I just thought this would be fun. Okay, so before we get started, I do just wanna mention, give these little guys a shout out. I love them. I use them all the time. They're great for when you're doing your makeup. A lot of times I find I accidentally get some foundation or powder in my hairline. So having these guys really prevent that from happening. I also use it when I wash my face or when I'm using like a treatment, like a mask. So I will link these down below as well. as Everything else that I'm gonna mention and talk about and show you in this video if you're interested. All right, so let's just jump right in. Question number one, was your proposal a surprise? And do you have a date set for the wedding? By the way, congrats. Thank you so much. It was a huge surprise. I had no idea. Before I get into that story, I'm gonna start by priming my face. This has been my recent go-to. It's the Unseen Sunscreen by Supergoo. So this is a sunscreen, but it's also a makeup primer. You can wear it alone, or like I am today, under your makeup. So it's a weightless, colorless, scentless, oil-free formula that smooths the appearance of pores and grips onto your makeup. So I really like this one because it has a sunscreen in it. Really for anyone, it's just not gonna... Oh, it's just my doorbell camera. <laughs> it's probably a leaf. Or a bug. Um, but this one's good for anyone that wants that added protection and sunscreen, which I do because I'm on the dryer side recently and on my medication, the sun just burns me. I'm like a vampire. So I'm gonna put this guy on all over. But it was a huge surprise. I had no idea. I looked like I look right now. I looked ratchet. It happened during quarantine, so I haven't had my hair done, my eyebrows done, my nails done. I still haven't had any of this done since quarantine began. But normally, you know, like you have this vision in your head of how your wedding and proposal and everything's gonna be. And I just always planned on having like my nails done and like, no, homegirl looks like this. So it turns out he actually planned on proposing at another time and location, but with everything that's been going on, hold on, I need to put some Aquaphor on my lips because they literally already just cracked. <sighs> so dry gonna lube up but with quarantine everything going on there was just so much uncertainty and he had had the ring for a while later on he told me i'm just gonna wait any longer he didn't know when he would be able to and yeah so randomly decided to ask <laughs> we had just finished having dinner at home like nothing fancy so i really didn't want to announce this right now but i guess i'm just gonna tell you right now so i started a blog <laughs> I just think it's a better way for me to be able to open up to you guys and be able to really post almost like anytime I want. Videos for me are a lot harder. I think the workload of it is a lot harder as far as like, really it's just the editing. I wish I had someone to edit for me. <laughs> so I'm really excited to be able to incorporate that into the social platforms that I already have and connect with you guys on. I'm hoping that's exciting news for you guys too. <laughs> I've been working so hard on this damn thing. So yeah, surprise. <laughs> that's what I've been working on for literally like, six months now. I posted in full depth all about the proposal. So yeah, I'm really excited to share that with you guys. If you wanna check it out, I'll post the link down below. I'm so excited. <laughs> if you want the full uh, details and information on the proposal, it'll be there for you guys to check out. I'm actually skipping the foundation. So what I'm gonna do for that today and what I've been recently doing is actually using Tarte Shape Tape. So I've been using three different shades and I've been doing one for coverage as far as like breakouts, under eye, uh, one for highlight, and then one for contour. So I'm first gonna go in with, which one do I use? I think light medium, yeah, my light medium. So have not picked a date. We really just figured we should wait until 2022, which seems so far away, but really it's not, because we figured with everything that everyone's been going through this year thus far, on top of like having to reschedule their weddings, we just figured it would be so much easier to let them have their time as far as rescheduling next year and wait a bit longer. And honestly, it's better off because then we can just save up more. No like actual date. Oops. We'll see. I don't know for sure. We're still totally like up in the air about everything that's going on, but we're very excited. Damn it, I forgot to wet my little beauty blender. All right, then I'm gonna go in with the highlight areas. Um, this one is light, medium honey, and this is gonna go like in the T-zone, all the highlight areas. But yeah, I'm thinking, you know, sometime where it's like semi-cooler, like crisp, not buggy, like mosquitoes and stuff. Um, also, just like not sweaty in general <laughs> would be great. Um, yeah, planning's been like not going so well yet. <laughs> but the venue for me is definitely the hardest thing to find right now for what I'm looking for. So I'm really thinking like something outdoorsy, like a barn or a vineyard or just like something out 
side that's like in the trees, you know, <laughs> back in the sticks. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be the hardest part for me. Everything else I feel like will just come together and I'll figure it out. All right, then I'm just gonna blend this all around. How do you maintain your weight and do you find it difficult during pandemic? I go back and forth of what's harder, um, maintenance or weight loss. I, f I do feel like maintenance is somewhat easier, to be honest, but it's also easy to give into temptation. So it really just depends on your personality and your motivation and like willpower. But as far as like, how do you maintain it? Like I've said this so many times before and it's just so important to remember that it's a lifestyle, not a diet and it's not a destination. So you don't just give up what your new routine is once you reach your like goal number or how you feel comfortable with yourself. You just have to continue to live that way. So if you, for example, lost a bunch of weight and achieved your goal by cutting out soda and cut down on sugar and alcohol and, that, and that's all you did, you need to continue to do that. Of course, you can have everything in moderation, but in order to maintain, you have to continue that same lifestyle. Does that make sense? It really does just become a routine. Like you just get used to it. And then when you do have those things that you don't have normally anymore, it's so weird. Like it doesn't taste the same. Like I'll have a soda it's when I'm hungover, like Mickey D's Coke is <laughs> life. You know, like I'll randomly have it, but these things are just not like something that I keep on hand or have all the time. So I guess that's also key is what you buy and what you have around you um, also helps you to maintain. So you're not going to cave in to any type of temptation. I would say I would have found it difficult if I was still like attending a gym. Since we built our house, I've actually been working out at home. So that's made it so much easier because I don't have to go anywhere and deal with all of the issues that go with being quarantined and on lockdown and staying at home because I have everything I need for the most part. I mean, I would love more or different equipment that I just can't afford or have room for, but I make it work with what I do have. Um, so if you're interested on something like that, I can definitely post more information either on here or my new blog, <laughs> which I also have already started fitness weight loss posts on there too. So if there's more you want to check out, just let me know like what kind of content you're looking for. And I can certainly post on my blog super in depth on that or whatever you want to see. So did that answer your question? <laughs> I feel like I talk in circles sometimes. Also, like, ugh, I'm just like loving this pair. That primer and these all over ugh, just gives like such a really nice finish. Like it's full coverage, but it still looks so natural. Like it's not like caking. You know what I mean? Like, ah, it's just so good. And it feels nice on the skin. Oh, my poor crusty lips. <laughs> okay, next question. Best product for under eyes, lightening bags and brightening without highlighter. So I'm assuming you mean without like concealer and highlighter? So basically more so like skincare related rather than makeup. Well, as far as makeup, I definitely recommend this because bam. But as far as like skincare related, I'll be honest with you. I have not found something that I'm in love with. So I'm not going to try and sell you on something that I can't personally say from experience that I've loved. I have tried a bunch of different products and I'll post the ones that I do like, but there hasn't been anything that really like stood out to me as far as like this is it. So I'm also still looking for that product. But again, for the things that I have used and the things that I have liked and the things that have great reviews, um, everything works different for everyone. So I will post my recommendations for that down below. I also recommend if you do get like puffy, I get puffy around my eyes, especially when I first wake up to use like a spoon that you've had in your freezer, which sounds so weird, but just like having that spoon on hand and then you put it on your eyes or even masks, they make masks that you put in your freezer or fridge and they just work really, really well as far as circulation and blood vessels and um, like swelling or puffy eyes. So I do recommend that also in the meantime, which is like super janky and redneck, but it works really well. <laughs> How often do you exercise to keep your current weight or no exercise and just balanced diet? So I do still exercise and that's so important. You, you should continue to exercise. Everyone should exercise because it's not just for weight loss and it's not even just for like fitness. It's also for you mentally and also like your, your insides, <laughs> like your heart. It is so important to continue to exercise whether you are on a weight loss journey maintaining or you just need to blow off steam. It's really honestly healthy overall. But as far as like the maintaining right now, what I've been doing or recently is typically I would say on average, it's three times a week as far as like an actual like routine or workout. But in general, I'm like a very active person. I just like don't like sitting down. <laughs> so that also helps 
Um, before I continue with that thought, let's move on to the next thing. So yeah, like look how much coverage, etc., that gave me, but also some slight definition. All right, so now to further my contour, I'm gonna use the Benefit Hula. And for my cheekbone area, I'm gonna use like a little, this one isn't labeled, so I'm gonna have to figure out what this is brush-wise, but it's uh, an angled blush brush, which I'm gonna use for my blush and contour, but I'm gonna place that right in the cheekbone area, uh, around my hairline, and down the sides of my nose, and my little double chin. But yeah, I think just being super active has really helped, especially over the summertime. Like, I'm always outside. I'm finding something to do, especially with the landscaping stuff. And I always preach or have always said, like, a body in motion stays in motion, a body at rest stays at rest. Yeah, like, that's, like, super, like, nerdy of me to say, but it's so true. So when you get into a routine, if your routine is being lazy, which is like really shitty to say, but like sitting around and finding excuses to not do something, which I did for so long. Like I just always had an excuse. I didn't want to do whatever it is I should have been doing, like go to the gym. <laughs> Or I would always say shit like, there's no time, or I'm too tired. Okay, well, you're not going to see the results unless you put the work in. That's just how it is. And I had to give myself tough love, suck it up, and do it. And once you do it and continue to do it, like anything else, it just becomes habit, routine. You get used to it, I guess. Wow, I just really feel like I just sounded, like, mean. <laughs> that's just how I felt, and that's what I told myself, and that's what I did. And that's what worked for me. I do continue to exercise, um, also to balance my diet. Like, for example, I love sweets. And if I'm craving something, a cookie, whatever, I'll have it. But then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking or remembering that it has to be more better, <laughs> more healthier than bad and non-healthy. You know, you really just need to balance it out, but you should typically be better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can have steak for dinner, but also other times you should have a salad or have a side salad rather than fries or whatever. I mean, that's just like a super random example, but it is very important to balance out. You don't want to be like super strict because you'll crash. Or if you're like me, that's how you will be. Next, I'm going to set with the ColourPop No Filter setting powder, and I'm just going to use my Beauty Blender to place that where I need it before I move on. You just have to know yourself and figure out how you are because everyone's different. Not everyone's gonna be just like me where they can't handle complete restriction or they can't handle um, like calorie counting. God, that made me so crazy. For some people, it works great. For me, it's not about counting it. It's about being conscious of it, like where these calories are coming from and what it is. <laughs> Can you even take me seriously right now? <laughs> God, I'm so excited for my vlog right now. I've already done posts on these things that you guys are asking me, so. Are you done with Accutane? Diet update, can't wait for it. Okay, so let's just jump to the second part of it because that's what we're talking about anyway. So diet update, um, you guys know, or most of you guys know, I do what I eat in a day videos. So I definitely recommend checking those out if you are someone that is interested and wants to know more about different examples of what I recommend you eat. Obviously I'm not a doctor and or a nutritionist or anything like that. It's just from my own experience and what works for me and what I like. So they're just ideas. You know, like, hey, rather than going to, like, a fast food restaurant, have this on hand and make it. You know, just, like, substituting into what you currently eat and what you could eat. Or to just get ideas of how you can switch it up, even if it's not even for weight loss. If you're just looking to find something else that you could eat instead of your typical whatever go-to that you're bored of, maybe you watch for that reason. But I'm really, really thrilled that I get so much good feedback on those videos for the most part and that you guys like them because I love doing them. It just makes me feel so happy when I hear from you guys that I've helped you or inspired you or motivated you or whatever on your own journey. I would say though, for the most part, it is like lower carb, lower sugar, lower bad fats because there are healthy good fats. Yeah, my blog post goes a lot more in depth on that if you wanna check that out. Are you done with Accutane? <laughs> no, not yet. And that's why I have crusty scaly lips, <laughs> still. Hi, sweet girl. Oh, this is my Ruru. My sweet little McLovin's. Sadly, I am still on Accutane, which there's a dedicated post. So if you wanna know about my journey on Accutane, or if you're interested in getting started on that medication, or you're just curious about it, then check it out. I go uncomfortably far in detail, so <laughs> you're welcome. 
I just feel like it's important to be real and honest and open because we're all human and if anyone is dealing with things that I've dealt with that I can just give a little bit of insight or help on, it's important. And I would want that for myself. I also research everything. I'm a little Googleizer and look things up before doing it myself. So yeah, hopefully my post will help you even if it's a little cringy. <laughs> Speaking of cringy, what in the actual F happened to this? That's what I want to know. Like, first of all, she broke. What is this? It's also like sticky. I have no idea. This is the NARS Deep Throw, and I'm gonna use that same brush I used for the contour. But this time I'm gonna focus the product up top of the bristles before I focus it more towards the bottom. And again, I'm just gonna swipe that right there. Oh, look how skinny I look now. <laughs> And then I'm going to go in with my highlight, and this is the Tarte Exposed Highlight. Looks like that. Do you like your hair better blonde or brunette? Can only pick one. Prior to quarantine, I was supposed to go back to brunette. I am naturally blonde, but I don't know, just something about being brunette, I, I just really loved it. I felt like it really made my eyes stand out more, and I could wear a lot more different makeup styles without looking like too much. A lot of times with my hair lighter, I feel like if I wear like a smoky eye or like even just like a lip color, it looks like so much more than what it looks like when I have darker hair. That could just be in my head, <laughs> but that's how I felt. And I've wanted to go back brunette for a while now. So once everything happened, I couldn't. And I've been for the last couple weeks actually reaching out to people and they haven't been taking new customers or clients yet. So I haven't been able to have my hair done yet. But yeah, I think very soon I'm going to be darker again but I think I do prefer the dark side more. Did you ever feel judged or criticized on your weight loss journey? Holy shit, yes. Can I just tell you, people, they're mean. <laughs> I've been somewhat of a loser. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I have more of a smaller, close-knit relationship with people. Obviously not counting all of you guys. <laughs> I just mean that I like hang out with. I don't know. I just, when I was younger, I mainly kept to myself. I was much more of a shy to myself person. The older I got, I got like social anxiety. So like I wasn't very like outgoing. I wouldn't just randomly go introduce myself. I don't like all the attention on me. I get super awkward and like I start sweating and my face gets red and I don't know. It's just really weird. And I don't know why it happens because it's just, you know, it's all in my head. Oh. A little hairball? I definitely received more love than I received hate, but yeah, I mean, I did receive messages that were rude, just so rude. I would post fitness related content all the time, especially in the beginning of my journey. And it just was so helpful for me to do that. And yeah, I would see a lot of kindness and support, which I think is so, so important to keep yourself going. And also again, just to like, help others out there struggling with whatever you may be struggling with, like motivation. Yeah, but I would receive so many judgmental, negative, hurtful things. And at the end of the day, you just have to try and remember that that's a reflection of them. However, someone talks about you, if someone talks shit behind your back or they talk shit to your face. At the end of the day, you just have to think that person must be dealing with something, but they took it out on you. Like maybe they're struggling themselves with losing weight and they just had a bad day and they took it out on you. Or I don't know. I can honestly say in my entire life, almost 30 years now, I've never just gone out and left a shitty like comment or message to someone. If it's something that you wouldn't say to someone's face, why would you hide behind a screen and do it? I feel like it's 101 when you're a kid. If it's not nice, don't say anything at all. I would say the, the worst thing is when someone does a backhanded compliment. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get a lot of those. I've never been that type of person so I just can't comprehend it. Before my weight loss journey even started, I would receive like a ton of random comments or messages saying that I was fat or ugly or whatever. And then when I started losing all the weight and when I reached my lowest weight, um, I got a ton of, you're anorexic, you have an eating disorder, you're too thin, blah, blah, blah. Like, so fun annoying because you can never please everyone and it's just really frustrating and that honestly just comes with the territory of being in the public eye being on the internet being yourself in front of people who either disagree with you or don't understand you i am always to something or not enough of something and sadly that's just the way some people are you have to have a thick skin i guess or you develop one i think this is one of the older questions <laughs> how do you keep your hair looking so healthy after color treating it i have a mix of questions that i was asked previously that i had done like a little response to on ig stories but i want 
wanted to include them in this and this definitely has to be one of those because recently with the Accutane also I'm gonna start filling in my brows with the precisely my brow from Benefit this is the ultra fine brow defining pencil and this is in shade two with the Accutane the last since November I should say since November don't even know how long that's been my hair completely started to break off I now have like a baby bird hair mullet it's just part of the possible side effects and I've come to terms with it. It is what it is. It's gonna heal and grow back once I'm finally done my course. But yeah, uh, right now she ain't looking good. She is brittle and dry. And I have started products for that, which I do actually think has helped somewhat. Um, it's just, it's gonna have to heal on its own when it's not being pulled of all its oils and hydration from the medication. Before then, I was using uh, Redken. I was using two different products from Redken. I'm gonna have to go in my shower and look. I'll get back to you on that. And I'm gonna post it down below um, because I did really like it and I used them for a long time. And I guess you thought it looked good too. So it must've worked. It's funny, you don't realize something until it's gone. That's so true. Especially like your youth. The older we get, like you blink. I blinked and I'm 30, almost. When did this happen? How did this happen? I would say since like 2014 have just been a whirlwind and I don't understand how it's already 2020. Actually, we're like halfway over with 2020. I don't understand it. What was I even talking about? I'm like wallowing in the fact that I'm aging. <laughs> so yeah, I'll let you know what I used then and I will also update what I just started using to help because I'm gonna let you know these hairs are not liking this medication, but my face is. Like, oh, I have not had a cyst since I don't even remember when. And it only took me until adulthood to finally find what works for me. So yeah, that's just one of the sacrifices I had to make to get good skin, I guess, is to have shitty hair for a while. Uh, what is your favorite go-to healthy meal? I feel like I have like certain things always on hand. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's like an actual meal because sometimes I just throw shit together, whatever I have. But I know that there are certain things I do always have for 99% of the time. That is for sure chicken, like chicken breasts. Um, shrimp, because there's just so many ways you can eat it. Fruit, I'm a fruit maniac, so I will snack on that like I, in the summertime, I love like fruit salad. Literally all it is, is mixed berries, like ugh, pineapple, blueberry, strawberry. I could eat that like all day, every day when it's friggin' 98 degrees outside, super humid. Like I don't want to eat a hot meal during the summer when it's like that, you know? Gross. So something like light, cold is perfect, which doesn't answer your question. I know it's not a meal, but that's like one of my go-to snack type things. Let's just take a moment of silence to respect this eyebrow. <laughs> but yeah, same thing goes for like chicken um, or shrimp. Both are super high in protein and I can easily throw some type of veggie with that. If I don't have a fresh veggie on hand, I always, again, have a frozen veggie, like a steamer pack. My favorite would be the Brussels, like Brussels sprouts. Also the Asian, I think it's called Asian blend. Oh my God, I just love both of those. And I'll post those down below too if you wanna check them out and where you can buy them, but. I'm more of um, like a stockpiler in my favorite items and then I kind of just throw together, which is like, it's not gonna work for everyone, obviously. Like we don't have kids. It's much easier for us in that situation. Not having kids yet um, as far as like meal planning and stuff, but it is something obviously I'll have to consider down the road. As far as like the winter, I am obsessed with crock pots. Ask Will, he loves them, thank God, because it's just so easy. I can put whatever, like a chicken, in there, leave it in there with like one or two other things, like cream of mushroom soup, and bam! Six hours to eight hours later, you magically have a delicious meal. You can like pair it with like a baked potato or whatever, broccoli, you know? I just am more about convenience and affordability. <laughs> You know, like if I have a friggin' coupon for something to stockpile on, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'll buy 800 chicken breasts that I can put in my freezer because they're on sale. I will like do an actual responsible breakdown full post on that because that's a legitimate question. This is my Kmart eyebrow. It like never turns out the way I want it to. I feel like I just need to like pluck off these extras real quick. That's probably why it's not looking like snatched. She's a little hairy. What are your workouts like? They've definitely changed throughout my journey, but the 101 version, before you read my blog post on it, 
in the beginning I was doing a workout like I believe it was five times a week and it was just cardio then once I started losing the weight I switched over or no yeah was it I, I have it written in my blog I'd have to go check because I actually like looked it up photos and dates and everything to figure out to make sure what I was telling you was correct. I did two days. So I know I sound like a crazy person. If you've seen my weight loss journey video, like I legit got emotional in that video. So you know like how driven I was and I started basically I guess getting like addicted to having that in my routine like that lifestyle and working out and releasing the endorphins and all of that. So I started doing two days and that also was because I wanted to focus not only on losing fat, but uh, toning. I wanted to build muscle, so I would start off by doing cardio in the morning and then lift at night, which I guess, I mean, that is a lot for a lot of people. Just going to the gym once is hard enough for a lot of people, and I understand that, I know. But you just get used to it, you get in that lifestyle, and if you are motivated like I was, you don't really second guess it, you just do it. And I did that for a couple months. Then I started to really tone up. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just do weightlifting. So I did like HIIT training and uh, weight training once a day for like four days a week. I did that for a while, and I got real toned. Like, I look back, your girl had a four pack. I legit had like muscular abs. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> and I could lift like heavy. I got more like relaxed and I guess since then slash like recently I'm more like three days a week and I kind of switch what I do. Some days I do cardio, like I'll get on my bike. Um, other days I'll do HIIT and then other days I will just do weightlifting and typically it's a lower weight for longer reps. And I do like to switch it up a lot, especially these last couple years because I've done more. Like in the beginning I didn't know what I was doing. It was basically trying and error. I would research and then do it and then if I liked it or thought it was working I would continue. If I didn't then I would switch it up and do something else. Everyone has their thing. Like some people love, uh, what is it called? Oh, why can't I think of what it's called? I can't think of it. All right, well, I'll use another example. Like kickboxing. People love kickboxing. People love the stationary bike. Some people love to run. How? I have no clue. I hate running, <laughs> but some people love it. Um, swimming, whatever. There's like so many different ways that you can work out and get that in your routine. It doesn't have to be whatever X, Y, and Z does. However you can get your heart rate up and work out, do it. And you're not gonna know if you like it until you try it. So try it. CrossFit, that's what it was, CrossFit. I couldn't think of it. It was hurting my brain. People love CrossFit. Um, yeah, I can definitely dedicate a post to that too. I'm really actually glad that I'm doing this video with you guys. I'm just gonna basically print out this and like check the box of which ones I've done. How do you prevent binge eating slash drinking? I always use anxiety as an excuse. Okay. So from a fellow anxious being, I get it. But I feel like different people react in different ways in different situations. So my anxiety, um, not only is socially, like when I'm having conversation with someone sometimes or in front of a group of people or publicly speaking, I certainly get it then, but I also am just constantly always slightly anxious and don't always notice it. Like recently since my Accutane, I have found that I'm super self-conscious about the dry peeling lips I've been experiencing to where I'm constantly touching my lips and it's seriously such a bad habit, but it's because I'm anxious about it. I'm just gonna lube up again. Sorry. When I'm more anxious, I actually don't eat. So, which is also a problem because then I get like lightheaded and dizzy and tired because I have no energy and no fuel for my body. So that's also not great. Um, but I know other people eat when they're anxious and depressed. So everyone's different of how they deal with how they're feeling and everything. I don't do it often, I guess. I would say I just go back to being more balanced. So I, that's again why I think living that type of lifestyle for me has been so important. I'm just gonna contour my nose a little bit more because I can't be, I can't, I cannot be really strict, but allowing myself to balance is very helpful and overall benef beneficial to me, I think, as far as helping me avoid binging as often. I wouldn't even necessarily say I'm binging actually sometimes, like maybe I am just allowing myself, um, you know, like not being so in control and it's important. You have to find that balance that works for you to where you don't feel like you're punishing yourself because you shouldn't be. You are not punishing yourself on your journey. You can't look at it that way. It can't be a negative thing. It has to be positive. You have to keep yourself uplifted and positive and you can do it. You got this, whatever. Just, it needs to be a good thing. You can't worry about the lows and kick yourself for having 
a cookie or drinking a couple glasses of wine or whatever. Like you just have to remember it's not a nightly daily thing. It is more so of a treat. So you need to really just focus that mentality if you're like me. Um, so you don't go crazy and you don't binge and then create a cycle where you feel guilty because it shouldn't be that way. You are allowed to still have things that you love just in moderation, like portions. It also helps me to not feel anxious towards food. That can create a whole nother bad cycle. You want to still be able to enjoy your meals, enjoy your food. You don't want to feel guilty. So it's just very important to have a good relationship with what and how you're eating. Also things like, um, I call them smart swaps, but basically substituting a healthier option for something that's not so healthy. Like when you're baking, instead of using oil and butter, you can use applesauce or avocado or Greek yogurt and still get that full flavor, but cutting out the things that aren't necessarily good for you. So stuff like that, or maybe like a sandwich, instead of having the bread, like the excess carbs, if you wanna cut down on carbs, you can either make roll-ups or use lettuce. Just like there's different ways that you can get around it, almost like tricking yourself, even though <laughs> you know what you're doing, you just overall feel better about it. Just little hacks like that, I find are very beneficial to me. And yeah, like I still drink and stuff. I just do it in moderation. Do you plan your week? The amount of videos you record and edit, are they pre-planned? So yes and no. I feel like I go through cycles of that too. Like some months, I'll be like super prepared, especially closer to Halloween. Holiday content in general, I actually typically like pre-plan because I just love it so much. But during like the summer months, there's not really like a theme per se. So I find that a bit more, well, it goes both ways. A bit more complicated, even though it's not because you really have the freedom to do whatever type of content you want or that's requested or asked. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. And I feel like that my content in general is that way because my content is so broad. Like it started off with beauty and then fashion and then and weight loss and fitness and lifestyle, uh, special effects makeup, like do-it-yourself projects, home renovation. It just, it's so broad, which you would think would be a good thing. And I guess it is because I can connect with just so many different people about so many different things. And if you're like me, you just have an interest in so many things, but it's also hard to find your niche as far as like a community. So as far as like career-wise influencing, it has been a bit harder for me personally because I'm not typically known for one theme or subject and I produce all this different type of content that's asked of me or that I'm interested in and it doesn't always respond well with some of my viewers or followers. Does that make sense? Like some of the people started following me for my fitness and I don't always post about that. Sometimes I do or about my beauty stuff. I don't always post about beauty or whatever. Whatever reason you followed me or connect with me might not always be what I post about. So, and I do apologize for that if you are someone who is looking for a certain thing and I don't always produce that for you. I try my best to get to every topic and every request and every comment and message and everything. And I always post something with hopes that it's what you guys want and what you guys like. So whatever it is you are looking for, comment that down below and whatever made you start following me or subscribe to me or whatever, I would also love to know that too. I'm having so much fun doing this. I've never done a video like this before. So this is really fun and I hope you guys are getting to know me more or better. I typically do like the voiceover style because it's just like easier and I can like really get into the art and the focus of whatever I'm doing. But yeah, this is fun. Do you eat before or after you work out? I always do after or like a few hours prior and then again later. So for example, Typically, I'm more of a morning workout type person. I just like to get it over with. Um, and I also prefer to have an empty stomach. I'm gonna move on to my eyes next. And I'm just going to prep the lids with my shape tape again. I typically get nauseous if I work out right after I've eaten. Some people are the complete opposite. They feel better eating before, but that's just me. Um, but if I do decide to work out later in the day, then of course I'll have my breakfast, wait a while, and then work out. Do you think it's more diet or working out that helped you lose weight? So definitely both because it depends where you start. I was in college right before I started. So right when I got out of college is when I really got into like fitness. But for me, it was like a whole different lifestyle all around. For you, it might be different. Maybe you already do work out, but you don't eat good or vice versa. So it's just gonna depend on you prior to what you already are now or before. Side note, these are all Anastasia Beverly Hill eyeshadows that I put in a Z palette. Have no idea what name they are. I'm gonna have to look them up and post them all down below. For me, both were just as important, but it might be more important right now for you to work out more. Or it might be more important for you to swap out your bad meals for better meals. 
Did you experience a lot of discomfort after having a breast augmentation? So I have two videos completely dedicated to that and my experience with my breast reduction lift augmentation. Honestly, as far as discomfort, I'm going to start with this guy right here. It's not even focusing. And I'm going to put this on the lid corner to corner. I don't know, like, I was drugged the whole time, which everyone is. <laughs> And I have a higher pain tolerance, so I'm told. So what I felt may be different than what someone else felt, but I, I really didn't think it was that terrible. The first time when I had just my reduction, I would say it was worse than the second time that I had the lift because the second time I had a built-in pump, like literally I had tubes of pain medicine inserted into my body and left there for like a week. So it was constantly helping with my pain, like a local anesthetic. Whereas before I was prescribed pain medication and I can't have like any pain medication because I throw up. I get so sick and then it's not even in my system anymore. So I'm just miserable. I didn't have that option the first time. I don't even know if it was a thing the first time because it was so long ago. So if that's an option, do it. It does cost more, obviously. It was worth it for me. Your muscles just feel really tight and sore. So it wasn't too bad. And check out those two videos because I go full in depth. Also, I've like, I vlogged it so you can see firsthand what I was feeling, how I looked etc. Um, and I'll post those direct links down below if you want to check them out. Where did you meet your boyfriend? How long have you been together? Why did I read like that? <laughs> oh, it's from the same person. Two questions. We met <laughs> in a bar. I was a responsible patron, <laughs> enjoying myself there quite often, and he was working there part-time on the weekends as a bouncer. And we just met there. And my best friend sneakily gave him my phone number without my knowledge. And it was really strange because that following Monday, we were both leaving the state slash country. So I was going to Chicago for further training for one of my part-time jobs. I was working as a counter manager for Armani Cosmetics at the time. Uh, so I went out there and he was going to Japan for NASA. He's a nerd. <laughs> I love it. So he went there for a year and we, I think we spoke twice that entire year. So really weird. I thought that was that. And then randomly we both show up at that same bar a year later and we've been together since. He asked me on a date. Date went great. We just stayed together. I don't even know if he officially asked me to be his girlfriend. I don't even remember when I started calling him my boyfriend. And here we are six years, oh, almost six years later. It'll be six years, November 1st. And now we're engaged. I went from Beyonce to fiance. And I post the video because he sneakily recorded it on my blog. So you can literally watch it and get my full explanation of why I have bitch face in the video. <laughs> oh, it's just my face. What's your zodiac sign? Aquarius, which I've heard are typically like very mean, like artsy to themselves, awkward. What is the secret to a balanced life? I truly don't feel like anyone knows for sure how to do this because we all preach about it and share what we do, but we're always going to be giving and taking. And that is life. Like whether it's your family, your friends, your job, your hobbies, your goals, something is giving and something is taking, sadly. And the secret to balancing all of it, I feel like is something that all of us struggle with. So I really don't know the answer to that, but prioritizing is so important. Also, side note, don't know his name yet, but when I figure it out, I'll let you know. And I'm gonna put him in the outer corner, closer to the lash line, but you just do the best you can. Uh, how do you stay motivated? I'm assuming, well, I'm not really sure. I'm assuming that means fitness wise. I would say that my weight loss countdown really were what pushed me and continued to push me, um, which I've showed you guys before in my weight loss video and also have posted about on my blog. So if you wanna check that out, I have pictures and everything and more in depth explanation of what that is and how it worked. But again, I'm very visual. So seeing that continued to push me and keep me motivated and inspired, but also certain things like when you look at yourself in a picture or you realize you have to buy a different size now because something doesn't fit anymore. Like those are also like little motivations or when someone just notices like a compliment is huge. That's motivating. So there's lots of little things, I guess, that really stick with me. Favorite song right now is definitely, what's it called? Chasing You by Morgan. Waylon, but I just love that song. It's so catchy and so sweet. It is a country song, by the way. I listen to everything. Country, rock, rap, everything. Will you do a house, beauty room, and or closet tour? Girl, yes. I started posting about the house in general before and afters and all of that on my blog, but I eventually do want to do like the full house. Houses are so expensive. No one tells you about the little costs here and there that add up so quick. And our experience with our builder was not great. Don't recommend them, so. That's a whole other story that I'll get to eventually. But yeah, I'm gonna be doing a full tour, in-depth everything very soon. 
I'm so excited. I'm gonna move on to my lashes, which recently I've been using the Superhero It Cosmetics Mascara, which has been a go-to for me for years. And then because it's so hot out and I get super sweaty and moist, I top it off with the L'Oreal Waterproof Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara. So I'm just gonna put this on first. I'm obsessed with this mascara. Seriously, I had them for, I don't even know how long. Oh my God, it just works so good. I wish it was an actual like waterproof formula though, or that they made it in both formulas for the summer because I just, my, like up here gets so um, sweaty and this will smudge over time, like throughout the day if I'm really sweaty. So I have the base of the mascara on and then I just like tip the lashes with the waterproof on top. And I just like focus that right where it's gonna hit my brow bone and possibly try and smudge on me when I'm sweaty. But I mean, I skip this typically during the winter time because I don't have to worry about that. Also, I don't love this mascara by itself at all, but oh shit. <laughs> but it does work well as far as like sealing the tips of this one. And then just take a little brow comb and get rid of any little clumpies. And if you are sloppy like me and accidentally hit your face, or eyelid or whatever with your mascara, let it dry first. And then I normally take a little spoolie eye and you can just boop him right away. Just make sure it's dry first. <laughs> Look it, gone. I don't always put mascara on the bottom, I'm gonna today, and I'm just gonna use a waterproof one for that. Can you do a video showing all of your DIYs and updates you've made on your home? So it's similar to the last question. <laughs> Yes, I'm so happy that you guys are a fan of that type of content because I love sharing it with you guys. It's been a hell of a ride already building our home and for those of you that don't know, all the home renovation and projects we've been doing alone. We have not hired, which is why it's taking much longer than it would, but also we're saving a lot of money. So yes, I would like things to be done quicker, but at the end of the day, we both are handy and we both enjoy doing the projects and really making, oh shit, I just got in my eye, and making the, you know, like builder grade contractor type home into a custom build home, then I'm excited to post that for you guys. <laughs> like, look at this crazy baby bird hair I have now. What is this? I haven't had a haircut in like, no joke, three years. And now it's all like three inches long. I'm gonna brush her out. And... Yeah, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what type of content you're looking for. And if you have any questions, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.